subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. In this edition of Global Print, I will talk to you about the ongoing disengagement between Indian and Chinese troops in Ladakh and the political will behind the Indian establishment in standing up to the Chinese. But before that, dear viewer, I'd like to make an appeal to you. You know that at The Print, we have been bringing you the best news stories, the best videos over the last several months of the pandemic. So please do pay a little, subscribe to us for a fair, free, non-partisan and unhyphenated journalism so that we can continue to bring our best work in the hope that you will continue to support us. So back to my column, Global Print, in which I talk about the ongoing disengagement between Indian and Chinese troops in Ladakh. Uh, we know that the, the, that the tanks have gone, the permanent structures have been taken away from the Pangong So Lake. Uh, the, the northern banks and the southern banks, which are the focus of this current disengagement, that is, uh, it's slowly clearing up. So what, is the, what are the reasons behind this um, disengagement that has taken place after 10 long months of Indian and Chinese troops facing off across each other uh, on, the L, on the LAC, that's the line of actual control? And I will make four points. The first is, that the Chinese Communist Party is celebrating its 100th anniversary later this July. And President Xi Jinping, who is also the head of the Chinese Military Commission, which is a sort of um, a super defense ministry type of position, certainly could not afford to be seen for his Chinese troops facing off against another country, in this case India, a fellow Asian power, when this uh, 100th anniversary was being celebrated. Uh, most likely with a lot of fanfare later this July. So they could not have had these enormous um, big celebrations if some of your troops and a few thousand of your troops are already at the border. So uh, the, the decision was made uh, over the last few weeks that there should be an honorable settlement between India and China. But let's face it, this is a serious loss of face for Xi Jinping. Uh, he did not expect that the Indian troops would hold off the Chinese. There was an element of surprise last year in April when they uh, aggressed across the line of actual control and have occupied territory, especially in the Depsang Plains, as well as in the Pangong So, because they came from Finger 8 right up to and they occupied several other fingers. So this settlement is, if you want to describe it as a serious loss of face, the Indian government has not said a word because the, there is the, the disengagement is still carrying on. So that's the first point. Xi Jinping could not be seen to have his own troops uh, still facing off against the Indian side when the 100th anniversary of the Chinese Communist Party was being celebrated. The second point is this unusual synergy between the Indian political and the military establishment. Now, you will argue that this is not new and that in a democracy like ours, the military will also will always uh, have a synergy with the with the political estab establishment, unlike in past Pakistan next door, where the military is very very powerful, and in a sense the uh, the prime minister and the and the politicals are are just a mukhota, if you like. But in India, it's very different, and that's completely true. So this operation that has been uh, carried out this last several months, a counter mobilization to the Chinese. Uh, when the, including the time when uh, Indian soldiers undertook this very secret uh, operation, surprised the Chinese by climbing uh, the heights of the Kailash range. So in at the end of August, and were able to oversee across the heights overlooking China. The Indians were on its own side of the line of actual control, so they did not cross that line at all. Now, my argument is that this synergy between the defense establishment and the uh, political side is quite unusual, but it was very, very real. And we, you know, of course, you've, you've got Prime Minister Narendra Modi, Defense Minister Rajnath Singh, External Affairs Minister S.J. Shankar, who has not just been very active on the back channel between India and China. He is a former ambassador to China as well when he was in the Foreign Service as a diplomat before he um, join politics. But there is also uh, a man behind the seas, scenes who has played a very important role, which and who is the Army Chief General M.M. Naravane. Now, General Naravane is a China hand. He knows 
the country. He has also been a former military attache in the India's embassy in Myanmar. So he also understands the uh, the China's role and China's expanding influence in Southeast Asia. And let me tell you about a small incident here, which was that after the June fifteenth brawl between Indian and Chinese troops, that terrible fracas in which twenty Indian soldiers were killed. Subsequent to that, the Chinese mobilized right across the line of actual control from the western sector in the in the west, which is the Ladakh area, across the middle sector right down to the eastern sector, which is Arunachal Pradesh, um, introducing uh, an element of fear into the ongoing operation that was the face-off in Ladakh. So, what did General Nirawane do? Of course, it had to be signed off by the political side. The Indian Army undertook a counter mobilization. So all across the LAC, across from Ladakh to Arunachal, Indian soldiers had mobilized right up to the um, right across the line of actual control. Um, there is also here I'd like to to also say that National Security Advisor Ajit Doval, who has been playing a very very important role, he has been talking to his counterparts as well um, in China. So. This melding, this synergy between the events establishment and the uh, political side that uh, has resulted in this agreement, a written agreement, a rare written agreement in which both sides will disengage, where the Chinese will go back to the, to beyond finger eight, which is the east of the Siruja post, and the Indian side will come down to the uh, Dhansing Thaba post. Now, this disengagement will hopefully lead to next steps after verification and this trust and verification will be uh, will take place at every step of the way the third aspect of this disengagement is the motivation of it why did the chinese do it nobody knows i have been talking to several people in the indian establishment and there is a lot of conjecturing but nobody knows why but let me point you to two articles in the um, and you can read them on the website of the of the CICIR, which is the China Institute for Contemporary International Relations. Now, this is a think tank of China's external intelligence, their Ministry of State Security, which is as close to Xi Jinping and the Politburo as you like. In this, um, you can check their website, in which you have two articles: one by the director of the South Asian uh, Institute of the CICIR, Hu Xiujeng in which he talks about the fact that, uh, that this um, lack of trust between India and China must be resolved very soon. Now, he doesn't say why this lack of trust takes place. He's also speaking, if you, if you read between the lines, there is a very um, sort of a dismissive and somewhat contemptuous tone that he adopts. And I think what the Chinese side was probably thinking was that this is a much weaker power that India, one-fifth the economy of China, was not going to be able to stand up to this uh, superior Chinese force. Now, whether the Chinese have been surprised because India has been able to stand up, it would be worth your while, dear viewer, to read these two articles in the uh, CICIR website. Now, the second article that I um, am referring you to says that the border issue must be decoupled from the rest of the India-China relationship. But what happened was exactly the opposite. And External Affairs Minister Jayashankar made it very, very clear that a resolution of the border is issue would be hostage to the rest of the, of the entire bilateral relationship. And you saw over the last several months how um, India banned several Chinese apps they, the, um, a lot of the imports were put under restricted access and basically the message being to the, to the Chinese that business cannot be as usual. So this, uh, this understanding on the Chinese that, that they were going to be able to separate the border from the rest of the relationship did not apply in this particular case. So I think the Chinese got the message that, you, that everything that they that they cannot separate, they cannot afford to um, to you know to aggress into another country, and uh, and then believe that the other country is going to take things lying down. The fourth point that I make in my article um, in my column Global Print is a question that nobody has been able to answer so far. What does China want? Now, some say that Xi Jinping wants to be the most 
powerful leader in the world. He wants um, China to be the most powerful country in the world. Some call it the Middle Kingdom complex. And if you um, and if you look at some think tanks abroad, they have said there is a very interesting story in the BBC as well as in the Guardian newspaper of London, which has said that China is going to become the biggest uh, economic power of the world in nominal GDP terms, of course, by 2028, five years before it was expected to do so. And one of the reasons for that is that its economy is going to bounce back much faster than the US or any other country in the world that it's been able to deal with the COVID outbreak. Although the, the, uh, the, uh, although the COVID uh, pandemic began in China, but China has been able to deal with it much, much better than the US, for example, which, which is still being debilitated by uh, the, the COVID-19 virus. So, the, so what does China want? The easy answer is that we don't know. The more difficult answer is that you have to look for clues. Even if China wants to be the, the most powerful nation in the world, what kind of a relationship does it want to does it want with its neighbors as well as with other countries? India, a fellow Asian power, a neighbor, does it want to have a permanent uneasy truce truce with India, where it believes that India has to be the the less powerful uh, nation and therefore always subservient? If the Chinese know India a little bit better than that, they know that this is not true and cannot be true that Indians are willing to live in this easy camaraderie. You do your thing, you're a much bigger country. The five times the size of India in, uh, in economic terms. But there is no question, India and China would like to live peaceably, but as equals. So the question, what China wants, watch out for the answers. Uh, we will uh, be, I will be talking to you about this over the next se several weeks and months, not just as uh, troops disengage, Hopefully in the next few weeks after the Pangong so they will move on to the Depsang Plains and after that to the uh, DBO sector. Um, we will be reading about this. Please send us your suggestions, your ideas and tell us what you think about this video. Thank you so much.